going on. Uh, but we have had a, a very significant breakthrough in the last uh, three or four weeks. Uh, we've had some very brave people coming forward from the political spectrum at last uh, and from three different parties. Uh, first of all, we had uh, uh, David Ruffley, who's a Conservative MP for uh, Bury St Edmunds, who's come forward and uh, attacked the Scottish Government for the way they've handled the Holly Gregg case and wants explanations. Uh, then we had uh, Lord Monckton from UKIP, who uh, publicly came on camera and demanded an investigation into the case. And uh, just this week, uh, we've had a, a very gallant MP from uh, uh, Cornwall, from the west of Cornwall, and his name is Andrew George, and Mr George as well has, uh, has gone very hard for the Scottish Government on this, for a proper explanation for what's been going on. All those things have been very valuable indeed to us, but uh, there's something even more important that's occurred uh, that some of you might have seen on the headlines uh, yesterday um, from uh, the firm, and that is the fact that uh, the Scottish uh, Commissioner, the uh, Freedom of Information Commissioner, Mr Kevin Dunian, has formally ruled that the Alex Salmond and the Scottish Ministers have been in breach of the Freedom of Information Act 2002 Scotland in not divulging information requested by a very gallant member of the public here called Ian McFerrin, who will be talking a little bit later on. Uh, the, which is which is a great breakthrough, but this is an official, official document uh, really condemning the, the Scottish Government. He's also gone on to say that if the ministers, and it is addressed specifically to uh, Alex Salmond, do not come up with all the information that has been requested of them by Mr McFerrin by the 11th of July, then he will approach the Court of Session with a view to having Alex Salmond brought uh, on a criminal charge of contempt of court. Uh, this is the first minister of a country who's just been elected and for the commissioner to put that in such strong language I think is a major way forward. So we're very pleased about that. Uh, now uh, obviously things, a lot of things are happening in Scotland and uh, we're putting a great deal of pressure on all the, the corrupt politicians who have served to, uh, to cover up this story. Uh, in particular, of course, uh, there's Elise Angelini who's been uh, forced to resign because of all the lies she told about her involvement in blocking the Holly Gregg case when she was procurator fiscal in uh, Aberdeen in 2000 and 2001. We've caught her out thanks to uh, some help from two uh, members of the Scottish National Party currently, uh, strangely enough, Brian Adam and Richard Lockhead, who's also uh, one of the ministers in Scotland. Uh, so we're pressing those two gentlemen to actually put pressure on Mr Salmon to come clean about all this and to ask for a public inquiry into everything to do with the Holly Gregg case, including what we believe to be the murder of Holly's, uh, Holly's uncle, Robert Gregg, who was a key witness, who witnessed uh, Holly's father abusing her, and we believe he was murdered in 1997. Uh, this, there's been more strength that has been put forward up on this particular issue by the uh, Malcolm Webster case, which some of you may be aware of in Scotland, where uh, the, uh, the person who, who uh, found that Mrs. Webster, the first Mrs. Webster, was uh, apparently accidentally died in a, a burning car, just the same as Robert Gregg. Uh, the same pathologist has been involved, and two members of, the, uh, of Holly's family who were named abusers and have also been named as abusing their own children. So all of those things need to come out. There needs to be a public uh, inquiry in Scotland, an open, independent inquiry, and let us get to the truth of this. We don't want anybody condemned uh, you know, without a fair trial or a fair hearing, but we've certainly got enough, certainly to show corruption and cover-up by senior Scottish politicians and police officers as well. So let us hope that that comes about soon, but we are getting plenty of support there. Um, I won't go on too long because obviously other people need to have a chance today and, and <laughs> you're nodding at me Belinda, thank you. <laughs> uh, but just to say that uh, you'll see down the, the poster there, uh, Shropshire, about uh, Shropshire's shame. Shropshire come into this because uh, obviously in the gang social workers were named. Scotland, the Shropshire people who should have nothing whatsoever to do with this other than the fact that Anne and Holly lived there after escaping from Scotland. Yeah, so, so, oh, yes. Uh, and uh, the, uh, the, the 3rd of June uh, last year, as uh, Belinda reminded me, the Shropshire Social Services got the police to actually come and raid the home of Anne and Holly in their village on the ridiculous pretext that they were missing persons. 
Now, I can tell you that was complete nonsense because I got a call uh, an hour and a half before the raid at home uh, from uh, uh, from uh, DC Ed Bates of West Mercia Police saying that social services were worried about the whereabouts of Anne and Holly and could I help? Well, of course, Anne and Holly don't account for me every every minute of the day where they're going to be. Uh, I'd seen them a few days earlier and understood them to be taking a very short holiday, which was the case. I thought that was quite enough, but uh, just an hour and a half later, uh, the police officers concerned, as well as two council workers, broke into the home of Anne and Holly, as I say, virtually one year ago, 3rd of June, and not only spent three and a half hours allegedly looking through a small house to find people who were supposedly missing, but ransacked the house, devastated it in the most appalling way. Obviously, a clear attempt to intimidate these two ladies to try and protect their uh, social worker criminal friends up in Aberdeen. Uh, now, there is a, a court case involving this, and we're going to have a, another hearing. It's not a major uh, function, it's just a, a, a procedural one that's going up on the uh, 14th of June at the Royal Courts of Justice. If anybody wants to come along, they can do. We're the most welcome. Uh, it won't be very long, I don't think, but uh, we're just taking the council on on that. There are some very bad people in the council who have behaved in an abominable way towards Anne and Holly, uh, the victims of such terrible, terrible atrocities. I'm going to name one or two of those people. The head of the child services is a woman called Councillor Aggie Caesar Homden. Uh, the person uh, who was uh, in charge of the, city, the chief executive of Shropshire Council is a man called Kim Riley. The head of the legal services is Tim Collard. And finally, the social services officer who's been responsible for this uh, persecution of these two vulnerable ladies is a man called Stephen Collard. And uh, no, Stephen Collard, Stephen Chandler, I'm sorry. Uh, Tim Collard and Stephen Chandler. Stephen Chandler, by the way, won't surprise you. Uh, social services, high flyer. Uh, just over two years ago was found to be, who was working in Worcestershire when his department were responsible for the, deaths, for the awful deaths of a woman and her son in Redditch. Of course uh, Chandler was brought forward to explain himself, tried to blame other people for it, uh, but the next thing we know he's there with a similarly high paid job in, uh, in neighbouring county Shropshire. That's the way it happens with social workers isn't it? Senior social workers anyway. Anyway, very much today I'm going to pass on to uh, the next speaker. Thank you very much indeed, but we've really got to fight for the rights, the, the de destructing uh, efforts of the family court and those who, uh, who are appropriate. Uh, there are obviously corrupt, some of our social workers are very good, but there are plenty of corrupt ones. There are plenty of corrupt psychologists who give false information. I'm sorry to say there are false and corrupt judges who also need to be brought to book over this. Let's see an end to the family courts. Let's see the end to secrecy. Let's have open family courts with the press and the public there. This is a blot on, on our political, on our own judicial system. It doesn't happen in many countries, uh, but there's a powerful vested interest for financial reasons and also for reasons of paedophilia who want to keep this going. Let's bring it to an end right now. Thank you very much to all of you. Thank you, Robert. It's certainly, um, that was a call to...